Hi everybody, it's Meredy here, um, and I am here today with our Sunshiny Day Page Kit. And I love this kit so much, and I love the layout that we're gonna make with it. So I'm gonna jump right in and start out by telling you what you're gonna get in your kit. First, you're going to get one of these Shimmers Spritz Hint of Mint. It's a really pretty color. You're gonna get one pack of Bit Simple Stories Retro Summer Bits and Pieces, and it has 50 pieces in here. You're gonna get one little length of yellow baker's twine. I don't know, it's about four or five feet. Four, maybe maybe three or four feet. It's, it's just enough for this layout. You're gonna get one Simple Stories Sunburst six by eight stencil. You're gonna get one Pink Fresh Alphabet called Spring Vibes. It's mini um, puffy alphas, there's 330 pieces. So some of the letters are this pastel, some of these are a little bit darker green and blue. And then for the paper, you're going to get from Simple Stories Retro Summer, the Summer Break paper. And from Pink Fresh um, Spring Vibes, it's called Daydreams. And another piece from Simple Stories Retro Summer, and this one is called Tag Elements. And another piece from Pink Fresh Spring Vibes, and this one is called Perfect Day. And then two sheets of white cardstock. You're also going to have a sheet of instructions in your layout, and that will be full color front and back instructions. And on the back side, there are cutting guides for the papers. So you're gonna start there and cut all your papers to what is outlined on the back of your instructions. And I'm going to go do that, and I will be right back. Alrighty guys, so I have all my papers cut, like the instructions say. And the first thing that we are gonna to want to do is, as you probably know, I don't use photos on my videos that I make. I use the papers to represent the photos. And the first thing that I want you to do, I used three by four photos. So if you're using three by four photos, I want you to trim a quarter of an inch off of two sides of each three by four photo, just like that. Um, so they're really two and three quarters by three and three quarters inches. This makes it very easy to mat these photos on a three by four inch sheet of paper rather than having to try to measure all the fractions. So that's the first thing that I want you to do is trim those down. And then we are going to take this paper and cut four pieces of this paper that are three inches by four inches. And those are going to be our photo mats. One, two. See how nice that is. And then one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to want you to grab this big sheet that you have remaining and cut two three by four squares from this one. So just cut two of these because you're going to need two photo mats in that color. This is, of course, if you're using the same picture dimensions as I am. If you're not, you have a lot of paper left to mat other size pictures as well. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and mat these photos. And two of these yellow ones, we're going to flip to the B side, the pink side. So I am going to mat these just like this. I'm going to mat, I want, you want to make sure how you want your photos laid out on the page before you actually mat them. And I already know, so that's why I'm just randomly picking. So you might want to lay your photos out in the array that you want them on the layout before you adhere them down to the mat here uh, to make sure that like all of your blue mats aren't next to each other or, or both of your yellow mats aren't next to each other so um, yeah you might want to do that first before just taping them all down Okay, now that we've got the photos matted, I'm going to move them all off to the side. 
And then we're gonna come in and we're gonna work on the left-hand side of this page first. And we're going to take this um, small strip of paper and tear down one side to expose the white core. And if you don't like the look of torn paper, of course, skip this part or use decorative edge scissors or maybe ink the edge. You don't have to tear it. That's just what I did. And then you're going, you have two strips here that have this text. The first one from the very bottom of the page is they're both two inches wide. The first one is showing the complete row, like nothing is cut off at the bottom. This one, you can see it's cut off at the bottom of these visuals. So you wanna keep this one that shows the bottom of each little sign. You're, wanna, you're gonna wanna tear this one that's partially got extra pieces. So flip it this way and you're gonna tear down both sides of this, both long sides and just tear up towards you in short little motions so you have the most control over your tear. So you've torn both sides up towards you. And then you're gonna take this strip and cut it in half directly down the center. We're gonna use one half on this page and one half on the other side. So we can put this off to the side. And then you're also going to want to take this piece and tear it down one side too. And we'll put that off to the side because it's for the other page as well. So let's get these off to the side here. And I'm going to pull out my stencil. And we're going to do a little bit of stencil work here. And I can hold that out. Okay, the most important thing is this stencil. So we are going to take this stencil and we're gonna make it look like a complete sunburst instead of just the sunrise or sunset. We're gonna do this and then we're gonna flip it upside down and do the bottom. So it's gonna be a complete sunrise. Um, you're gonna want it to be pretty much in half like in the middle of the paper. So maybe just a little bit down like that. So that's how you know where to place it. You've got a little bit of border on two sides sticking out. And then we're gonna get the fossilized amber or any yellow ink pad that kind of matches with um, this layout. And I'm using the fossilized amber distress oxide and I'm just gonna hold the stencil down really well and just do stencil work. I'm gonna kind of do heavy colors on this sun part down here. And then as I move up each sun ray, I'm not going all the way to the top to that harsh edge. I'm just doing it almost ombre. I'm doing a lot of color at the bottom of the sun ray. And as I go out, it's just a little. And I only go to like, right about there, because I don't want that harsh line of the stencil. So I'm going to do this um, for this whole top design, facing upwards like, a, like the sunrise or the sunset right here. And then I will show you how to do the bottom half. So I'll be right back. Okay, so pretty much I'm getting to the end of this. And now I'm going to take and flip my stencil upside down and line it up right along that sun line. And I'm going to just do the same exact thing upside down as I did right side up. Um, it does give you a little line here where these meet. I'll show you what I mean when I lift off the stencil. Um, but it doesn't bother me. It's just like a tiny little line where it gets a little dark. And I think you could probably go back in with a smaller blending tool and blend out the line. I'll show you what I mean. This side is actually covered by a picture, so this side doesn't matter so much. 
it's more where these two rays meet that it's more noticeable. So we just, whoop, we'll just do this all the way around just like I did on the top. Darker in the middle and then lighter as the rays extend outwards and I will do that off camera and I'll be right back and show you how to kind of blend if there's a line in there. Okay guys, do you see what I'm talking about? Like that little line? So I'm going to come in with like a tiny blending brush and just blend it together. Oop, got a little dark right there. I'm kind of making more of a mess on this one. And actually, once we get here in the middle of the sun, it's covered with a picture, so you won't be able to see it. But there, it's kind of blended together now um, where it needs to be. Okay. Next, I am going to take this Hint of Mint Spritz. I'm going to put a little paint just gently with my brush right up there and a little bit down here. We shake it up really well. And I'm just going to dip it in like, like a paint. Brush. Of course, you can mist with this too. It has the sprayer to mist, but I love using my mists like this. And I just want some up there, and I'm going to put quite a bit down here. I don't want to get it too much in this yellow because the yellow um, activates with water. So if I get it too much into this yellow paint, it's going to start messing with this yellow ink I mean it's going to start messing with the color of the yellow ink but I think this almost looks like cloudy clouds water something to that effect and I'm going to let this dry and we're going to grab our other sheet of white paper since we've got the um since we've got this mist out right now while that's drying I'm going to do this side and I want to kind of put a little up there kind of a lot over here and a little down here at the bottom. So I'm going to do the exact same technique. Just kind of splatting it around with a bigger brush, giving it like a little mottled look. You don't want to mess too, too much with it or it will start warping your paper and pilling your paper. So I just kind of do a little and I'm going to put a little bit up here off the side of the page. Okay. That's probably pretty good. I might have gone a little far over here, but it's okay. It's mixed media, so it's not anything that's meant to be perfect. But that does kind of look like clouds in the sun. Okay, then I'm going to come back over to this side and I'm going to put some splatters. I always like doing the splatters after the paint has dried. Otherwise, the splatters soak up in the paint and I don't want that to happen. Okay, we'll do some splatters on the other side after it dries too. But for now, I guess I really didn't need the glass mat for that. It was just if it dripped. Okay, 
so we can start adhering things down now we're going to start with these torn papers and I'm just going to gently place one and adhere this one kind of wedged under there and I'll get this one on top right there and this mist is still drying I'm not going to adhere stuff yet let me do the splattering on this page first that way this can dry too okay do well what we can do while those papers are drying is come to our tags and I want you to pick out your three favorite tags and it might be the A sides or the B sides of the tags and some of them are going to go upside down some of them are going to go right side up um I like this one so um yeah pick out your three favorite tags and I'll tell you what I'm going to use as soon as I find them Apparently, none of them are my favorite today. What's going on? Oh, I want, so I like this tag, but I want it to be dual tone like that. So I'm gonna cut this one and use the bottom. I'm just gonna adhere the bottom right on that tag because I don't really want this brown top. So you can mix and match the tags if you would like to get a color combo that you like. I think this will make sense when you see this. See, now it looks like a tag that's dual tone. And then the last one I'm going to use is this one. So we've got our tags that we're going to use. And I'm going to get my scissors and cut the little corners. This one I need to trim a little bit so that those sides are equal. Okay, so trim out the corners. And then get a hole punch and punch the hole. And if you had any like little miss cuts when you were cutting these apart, like this one has a teeny little, you can see the other tag that was next to it there. So you've got the three tags and the hole punch and punch out all three holes. And next, you're going to grab the twine, the little twine package from your kit. And I'm just going to go ahead, and you can even use this tag on your layout if you want from your twine package. Um, I just take the twine in a little length, and I make it three thick, like I go back, forth, back, so it's three layers thick and then I just tie it in a really simple like the beginning of tying your shoes I don't even do it in a whole knot because it gets too thick instead I'm just going to use some glue so it doesn't come apart okay and again, I'm going to take one, two, three, and trim it. Put it right through there, possibly. Ah, come on. And just tie the little beginning of a knot. Because then I like how it, the bows are kind of thick. When it's just one thickness of it, it gets kind of lost. You know, if it's just one bow or not tied like that, it gets kind of lost. And this last piece, 
one, two. These are about like maybe three or three and a half inches long, these little twists that I'm making, maybe three and a half inches, I guess, I don't know. And put that through. And then I think after this, our paint should be dry. And we can move on to the next step. I'm just going to trim. That one's a little long. Okay, so now we got our tags all ready for us when it's time to put them on the page. Oh, another thing that we can do is we can go ahead and cut this strip apart. So you're just going to cut it so it's like two strips of signage. So that is pretty easy. There's a little bit that needs to be trimmed off. So you've got just two strips of like the signage, little vintage signs. Okay, now we'll grab this first page. Yeah, this is plenty dry now. So this is the left-hand side of the layout. And we have a pink photo, a pink matted photo, a yellow matted photo, and a blue matted photo on this side. And we're just gonna place them like this. And then I'm gonna take this tag and put it right up in there. I am going to take this strip and I'm gonna trim off this very end so it doesn't have half of the sign. And I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this right there in the background. So I'm gonna adhere this first, right over where I've got all of my things laid out. So I'm going to start it right about there and just let it dull off the page. And then I can trim it off the end of the page. And then I'm gonna go ahead and adhere these down because this is exactly where these are going. This cute little tag is going right here. And then this picture basically sits a little bit above that strip. See how it covers up where the sun, we didn't need to worry that much about where the sun looked different. And then this last picture goes right here. Okay, now we wanna grab our little ephemera package and our alphabet stickers. So the, out of the ephemera package, I'm gonna grab a beach ball, some sunglasses, and a camera, just because those are cute, I liked those. So a beach ball, sunglasses, and a camera. I know they're in here. Okay, you have so many of these left. You can use lots more on this layout. You can use lots more on other layouts. There is a lot left. The little sunscreen, how cute. Okay, so we have got these embellishments. These are for the other side. This is for the other side. This is for the other side. Sorry, I kind of have a mess going on here. Um, the beach ball and the camera, I'm just gonna adhere straight to the back of my layout, kind of overlapping things a little. And then these blue sunglasses, I'm gonna pop up on foam tape, just to add a tiny little bit of interest there. And they're pretty small, so you don't need big pieces of foam tape. And those can just whoop, sit there. And then this is my favorite part. Um, I love these letters. I love how cute they are. I love this arch right here. So I'm gonna spell bright, sunshiny day all the way around there. 
And I'm gonna vary the letters, sometimes using different colors, sometimes, uh, I'm gonna try never to have the same color like right next to itself. And some of the colors don't match as well as others, like this dark blue, I didn't really use any of the dark blue. But I'm gonna start at the end with the word day. And I'm not pushing them down super hard in case I need to lift them up and readjust them um, at all. So I'm just kind of gently laying them down. And I'm going to do the rest of this title off camera because you, it's pretty not exciting to watch. But uh, yeah, this is so cute. So whatever title you choose, it can... if you know, if it's approximately that long, it will fit really good there. And if it's just a short title and and it doesn't fit all the way around the sun, it's still cute because look, like even just like a short title or a short title right there or a short title right there would look really good. So I will go off camera and finish this title and I will be right back. Okay, you guys can see that I'm finishing up this title. And I forgot to say, if your title is a little too long, like it's longer than this, just instead of doing it right at the end of the sun rays, start your letters out here a little bit and it'll give you more space because it has the circle will have a bigger circum circumference out there. Okay, this side is done. You can add a little more splatters down here if you want because you can see mine kind of started blending in. And the other side of the layout is starting here and we've already torn our paper so we can just go ahead and adhere and if I want a little more of this to stick out you can just not put this paper all the way up to the end watch what I mean I put it a little bit hanging off the end and I'm just gonna go back and trim I'll show you what I mean because I kind of miscalculated with those splatters, I think. Look, I just put it a little off over the end and I'm just gonna go trim. Guys, you have so many letters left over too that you can, you're obviously gonna be able to use these letters over and over again. Okay, so now I wanna set my original side right here so I can make sure that I'm lining things up. So for instance, I'm gonna give this a little trim after the word, welcome to surfing club. And I want this to continue from where it was on that side, just to continue here. So I'm just gonna do that. Okay, and I want to put this picture right about there and that one right here and this one resting right on top of this. So I can move this now because I pretty much lined it up exactly how I want it and then go ahead and adhere these down. Um, oh, I forgot to put my little tag in there. So you're gonna stick the tag under there. And I made it sticking out. Come on. I made it sticking out about a half, it's about a half of an inch away from the bottom there. If I could get it straight, that would be nice. There we go. And then we've got a tag up here too. Let me adhere this one first. So this tag is gonna go right next to this photo. And then this one is gonna overlap just like that a little adhesive because when I tore that up I made kind of a mess okay 
And now we can add these little embellishments. So I put the little cassette tape and I made the little hat look like it's hanging off the corner of the photo. I think I can move this cassette tape over here. I popped up the swimsuit since it's on top of those other two, just to add a little bit of interest there. Popped up that swimsuit. And then down here, I put this lemonade at the bottom, kind of hanging out like that. And then I put this lemonade drink popped it up so it could overlap right here and it also overlaps my picture a little and so it's kind of like that and guys I believe that, that wraps up this layout um I don't think I forgot anything um I will put still photos of this at the end of the video, of course. Um, there are pictures of this on the listing on our website and still close-ups of it. You're gonna have pictures of this on your instructions that came with the kit, so you can refer back to those for any of the placement or anything on here. And I think that's about it. If you wanna put a few more splatters, now that everything's real dry, it, it will, you'll be able to see them better. See how good you can see those splatters. You'll be able to see them really well like that even down here. So I will talk to you guys soon. Hope you're having a great summer. Bye.